sorry. <laughs> hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold on, hold on. Are you fucking blind? You can't see me. <laughs> Are you fucking blind? You can't see me. Like what? Sorry, sorry. Like what gave you that impression? You didn't even ask, like, oh, do your parents... No, you said your parents buy you... Sorry, that's just not true. I'm going to skip over this question. Um, let me show you. So, this is essentially... I've got quite a few up there, but this is one of my international law... Uh, this is one of my international law books. Um, and it's pretty, 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 pretty heavy, if I do say so myself. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube. Make sure my hair's on point. Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, it's Angelica here. If you're new then come in, have a seat, have several seats. And if you're not new then thank you so much for having me once again or up on your screen. In this video I'm going to be discussing law school, um, everything, everything law school. Um, so I asked on Instagram, if you don't have me already on social media, get with the program. I asked some of my followers on Instagram to send in some questions that they would like me to answer. So yeah, <laughs> this is going to be the Q&A um, about law school. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Uh, it's a good coincidence that my notepad is from a law firm called TMS. So um, they aren't sponsoring this video, but this is the notepad I'm using, uh, basically, because otherwise I'll just be essentially rambling on, um, which we don't want to do today. So, just gotta find it, just gotta find it. Okay, so the questions are here. So the first thing is, um, what grades are typical for law school? Before I actually answer this question, I probably should say what is law school because um, it kind of means different things depending on who's asking. So the first thing to be aware of is that in the UK, law school can be both undergraduate and uh, postgraduate level. So I consider myself to be in law school right now. I am studying undergraduate law at the LSE. Um, yeah, so I'm doing the LLB basically, it's called the Bachelor of Laws. So for me, I am in law school and this is generally um, a term people use interchangeably, although we also have postgraduate school. If you want to be a solicitor, we have the LPC, known as the Legal Practice Course, I believe, um, and this is what basically enables you to practice law. Um, but it's actually going to be changed, it's undergoing change by the Solicitors Regulatory Authority, the SRA. They're basically going to make this thing called, I think, I think it's called the XQA, I can't even remember. But basically, it's going to be a qualification instead of like law school, you can, it's going to basically just an exam. Um, it's a bit technical, I don't want to get way too in into it, but basically, if you're graduating in 2020 or after 2020, then you probably won't do the LPC. So me, for instance, I probably won't do the LPC, depending on when they implement the change. But apparently, it will be implemented in 2020, so it's going to affect me. If you want to be a barrister, we have the BPTC. It used to be called the BVC, um, so I'll just explain what that actually means so the bptc is the bar professional training course but it used to be known as the bar vocational course so essentially it's like an advocacy program and it trains you to be able to practice as a barrister after these law schools you essentially get a training contract or you get a pupillage these are law schools and you can essentially study law undergraduate in the uk um at basically almost every university, well don't quote me on that, but most universities offer a law course for undergraduate level, they also offer Masters of Law courses as well. Masters of Law is not the same as an LPC or a BPTC, so you will probably still have to do an LPC or a BPTC even if you do a Masters. A Masters is kind of like decoration, 
um, in the sense that it has no direct uh, it doesn't directly feed into uh, the set roots in the legal industry although you can still do it I'm planning to do one I'd really love to do one um, but for like personal reasons and for the courses I've mentioned I think there are like five universities that do the LPC this includes the Uni of Law and some other universities around the UK um, and BPP as well I think they do that as well um, so yeah law school means lots of things <laughs> in the UK but if you're in so what if you're talking about in the US for instance you can't study law at undergraduate level so what this means is that you basically have to do something other than law maybe like politics as an undergraduate study or maybe even chemistry um, I don't know uh, depends on your choice I guess and then for postgrad that's when you get to do something called the JD um, it's basically like a law degree <laughs> but postgrad you can either do that or you have to do an LLM okay so if you do an LLM um, you might still have to do a JD but it depends on where you do it and it depends on what type of firm you want to join what type of barrister you want to be um, but yeah so be woke when it comes to the term law school because it means different things for different countries like if you don't study law at undergraduate level you have to do the thing called the gdl so the gdl is like a year long course um essentially uh, like i think it's like nine months and you might be able to shorten it but it's basically a course you have to do after you do your degree in the uk if you don't study law it's called the graduate diploma in law so if you don't study law on the graduate level but you still want to practice law you have to do the gdl then you can do either the lpc if you want to go down the solicitor's route or you do the bptc if you want to go down the barrister's route of course there are other careers in law that might not need that like legal secretaries and paralegals um but that's kind of like a great area which I don't know too much about. In Nigeria as well, we also have law school and when people say law school, they basically mean what you do after your undergraduate degree. So now, on to <laughs> what grades are typical for law school. Law is generally quite competitive. Um, basically, like everywhere you go, like law is one of the very popular courses that people want to study. And so with that, it, it obviously, because it's competitive, you usually do need um, pretty decent grades. Um, so at LSE, the grade requirement as of now is A star AA. At other universities, it might be three A's, or it might be AAB, or even ABB. And some of them might ask for UCAS points. It really varies on the university. But if you're coming to a competitive university, um, like LSE, or UCL, or King's College London, or Cambridge, the um, entry requirement is currently A star AA so law is competitive um, especially at most good universities it can be pretty uh, competitive um, I guess it's part of them just filtering people out you know because um, if everyone wants to do law it gets to a point where applications might be somewhat identical and the only way you can uh, differentiate between candidates is for you to unfortunately do that by grades um, so yeah that's something to consider mm -hmm. the next question where is it gone where is it actually gone where is my law school QA? guys it's gone it's really just disappeared okay here it is so <laughs> oh my god okay so Someone asked me, is law interesting? Well, yeah, like I'm studying law, of course I'm going to say yes it is. So I might be a bit biased in the sense that um, I believe it's interesting and this can't be objective. But um, I think that the fact that so many people in history have studied law and have gone into really interesting careers, um, in, obviously correlation does not equal causation, but um, there is like there is something interesting that draws people from all different walks of life to study law. For first year at LSE, I had to do property, uh, basically like an introduction to property, or at least the philosophy of property. So we, oh God, 
I love LSE. If you guys can't tell, I love LSE. Um, so in property, they basically just jazzed it up to the point where we're learning about so many cool things like cultural property, um, colonialization, Bitcoin, and all like really, really juicy stuff. The ideology of ownership, essentially. Um, that was property one. We call it property one because we have something called property two, which I'm currently learning now. But um, I'll just quickly explain my other modules. So we also, I also did criminal law, which I think is kind of self-explanatory. I did public law, which is essentially constitutional law and administrative law put together, essentially. Um, I also did um, introduction to legal systems, which is basically an introduction to the foundation of what we call law today and diversity stats and judges, criminal, um, like disparities between uh, how different races are prosecuted stuff like this I don't think other unis would really like let you learn so that's one thing I really like about LSE so you need to choose your um, choose your university wisely and actually find out what you learn when you actually study there also had to do tort law and contract law in criminal law we're learning about whether drugs should be legalized um, so LSE really does the the most I can't say for other universities because obviously I'm not studying at other universities but um, I am very impressed by LSE's modules and compared to my gap year where I was at a different university learning law you can tell that there's a different like there are different styles of teaching law one was more archaic whereas LSE is actually like real life and for me I find that very interesting LSE just wanted to give us lots to learn um, in first year so I think those were, my, those were my modules, so I basically had six modules in first year. Now in second year I am doing the EU law specifically, we covered it briefly in public law, but I'm doing EU law uh, and Brexit <laughs> is coming up a lot. Um, yeah, just like the EU, essentially everything you can learn about the EU we're learning. Uh, also doing property two, so now this is land law and trust. This is the heavy, heavy law. I'm doing medical law, which is one of my options, um, and I'm doing public international law, which is also one of my options. I've got the opportunity to choose some of my law options this year. Medical law is essentially like tort law, liability, ethics, the philosophy of medicine, what we can do, what we can't do. Uh, causation, all that juicy stuff. Public international law, ugh, I'm so excited for it. Oh, I'm learning it right now, it's good. Public international law is basically uh, learning about a bit of colonization as well, treaties, war crimes, uh, economic uh, law, uh, human rights law, what you can do, like trade law, investment law, and like China, like the big countries uh, dominating the international community and what is a state, who is a state, wh who recognises a state, the UN. Law is interesting. At LSE, we really look at the bigger picture. You're basically seeing the synergies of interdependent functions in society. So you get to learn about the politics of law, you get to learn about the economics of law, the cultural um, aspects that um, form what we call law today. In the cases, sometimes you see judges arguing with each other, um, it's really funny. The next one is weird. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> Am I rich? My parents buy me everything. Well, the person asked me, are you rich? Your parents buy you everything. Um, sorry. <laughs> so, hold up, hold up. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold on, hold on. Are you f***ing blind? You can't see me. <laughs> are you f***ing blind? You can't see me. Like, what? Sorry. Sorry. Like, what gave you that impression? You didn't even ask, like, oh, do your parent. No, you said your parents buy you. Sorry. That's just not true. I'm going to skip over this question. You know, I'm not rich, but um, I will be one day. So stay tuned and see what I'm going to do with that wealth that I am going to build. I'm going to change the goddamn world. So someone asked me, how do I deal with um, getting work experience and stereotypes in the legal industry? Um, for me, I feel like my 
differences are not a disadvantage they can never be a disadvantage because in this day and age number one diversity is a is the right thing to do in terms of like like socially like everyone should be able to access an industry that they want to access if they put in the work right social mobility is a big movement so my differences i they're, they're nothing negative in my opinion secondly there's also a business case for diversity and i think these companies and firms are starting to realize my brain has something to offer something that if you have a monolith of minds you won't get that in terms of getting work experience i leverage my differences differences wow girl girl <laughs> that's a difference <laughs> no that's not i don't speak like that um i leverage my differences i, I did that when i was young by doing like programs like for people from diverse backgrounds and uh, like organizations that she exists to kind of prop you up and to enable you empower you to be able to get work experience so I'd very I'd hugely recommend you check my website to find out more about these organizations that I'm talking about um, such as SEO London, Sutton Trust, Aspiring Solicitors, there are a lot of them I can't list all of them in this video otherwise it'll be boring so check my website out so that's how I get how I got work experience to begin with. That's how I got my foot in the door because um, I knew no one in the legal industry. So for me, it was important that I was able to access the legal industry. Since then, I've been confident in my sleigh. Like I don't, um, I apply for things because I know I'm good enough for those things. Um, I I do my research and I know that I have the grades, the skills, the experience, um, and I don't worry about stereotypes. I don't really think. Actually, no, I, I lie. I lie. Um, sometimes I do kind of get a bit worried like in terms of um, like for instance the politics of black hair like if I was going to I don't wear weave guys I banned weave from my life for personal reasons we we'll probably discussed that one day on my channel but because of that it's either I rock braids or I go with my real hair <laughs> like and sometimes I feel kind of like uh, I don't know I kind of want to simulate I don't want to look too different I don't want to look like the woke black girl um, and the opposite has been true like I wore, I went with the same twist to one of my interviews for a vacation scheme at a magic circle law firm called Clifford Chance I'm naming them because it's a positive story and um, one of my basically graduate recruiters really liked my hair she commented on my hair and that made me feel so like at home like so at home I couldn't even explain because I was even thinking like People have called my twist dreads, like people have really said that I'm wearing dreads. It came from a really positive standpoint, um, they liked my hair and they told me and they didn't have to like, they didn't have to tell me that they really liked my twist, but they did. And they were white by the way, they weren't black or anything. So for me that was uh, quite encouraging um, and I've never really, I've never really felt like um, like anyone is projecting a stereotype on me. Lots of books. How do I like? It, what's, what's reading like? Um, there are lots of that. There, there is a lot of reading involved in um, <laughs> studying law. There's a lot. I don't know if you guys can see. Probably can't see. Let me show you some of my books that I have to read. These are like basically the core ones. So we have further reading, optional reading, external sources. Um, that we get told we can read. Um, let me show you. So this is essentially, I've got quite a few up there, but this is one of my international law. Uh, this is one of my international law books. Um, and it's pretty, 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 pretty heavy, if I do say so myself. Um, so I'm gonna put that on the floor because I can't bother to get up. So we do a lot of reading, and then we have lots of articles online as well that we have to read. Um, I think you just have to pace yourself, and you get really good at figuring out what is important and what isn't. Like, oh, honestly, this year, ugh, I'm gonna show you guys how I study because I'm even still like getting better at studying because taking notes like studying is like reading is one thing but taking notes at the same time can drag it out you can spend like one whole day just reading five pages honestly you can legit spend that long because you're kind of going back and forth between 
um, between the book and between your computer. It's a lot of reading but it's kind of expected and everyone is in the same boat. So one thing that uh, I benefited from last year was a study group. It was basically like a, this Google Drive from, uh, made by students in first year studying law and people just put their notes in there uh, from the readings and things like that so you wouldn't even have to uh, do all the readings uh, you could basically just split the work so if you're going to study law like try and find a group of people who you, with whom you can split the work because um, then yeah everyone everyone wins you know <laughs> but I, I must tell you like law students aren't that nice uh, yeah law schools law students just aren't that nice um, in general so it can get pretty competitive I don't know why people, some people will literally feel like if they give you their notes that means you get a better grade than them but really it's the brain that's writing the, the essay it's not like you can have all the notes and not get all the get the good marks it's the person that writes it well, obviously they feel like they're kind of aiding someone to do better than them but that comes from insecurity but I digress <laughs> how to get into law school I think you need motivation for the subject um, and you need to have an awareness of essentially what the subject studying is like so um, a lot of people apply ugh, a lot of people apply for um, to study law because they want um, they basically want to become a lawyer but you don't have to study law. You don't need to study law to practice law. You can come from a totally different background. Lots of people do that. Lots of people study science. Uh, they go into law. Just showing awareness for the subject study itself. Um, and real motivation. You know, go to open days, summer schools. Um, do as many things as you can to show that you have an outside interest. So it's not enough to be studying law A level. I didn't study law at A level. Um, I've got my reasons for doing that and do you know how many times I've said I'll discuss this in future videos I will discuss this in future videos just give me time guys um, yeah so I didn't study law at A level or GCC and I chose not to because I thought it was kind of moist but that's for another day I didn't think it was a good idea to study law at A level to be honest but um, I can see why some people decide to do it. show that if you are studying law at A level that you've done things outside of school to develop your interest in law um, because then it shows you have a genuine motivation questions I can answer for today because those were very uh, heavy questions I do have a few that I haven't got around to answering we should probably make this a proper thing if you guys have any questions for about law school then let me know because I'll make another Q&A video um, and we can make this a regular thing because I understand a lot of you want to study law um, I'm studying law right now so I can really let you know the tea, give you everything you need to know about law school. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found this useful. If you did, leave a thumbs up and a comment down below. Let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see on my channel, uh, leave it down below. Don't forget to connect with me on my other social media channels, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Uh, thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you in my next. Bye.